It's time to down your unders. Down your unders. Review and dissection of content from some of the sharpest minds in the game. Hosted by Adam Camilleri. Art of War. Down Under. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode 150 whatever of the Art of War Down Under podcast. I have no order, I have no plan, I'm just recording the things as I get the slots, as I get the uh, the clientele, the experts in order, in line. I'm joined by a wonderful Anzac Brethren, uh, now residing in the UK. You may have heard him on our Space Marines Index episode also, which may have came out a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, three months ago. I have no freaking idea. It's Mr. David Gaylard, mate. Hello. Welcome to the show again. Hey, thank you, man. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, it's good to be here. Uh, and I have to say, to my great shame, uh, after... Now, the third edition of the name change, I have listed this index as Astro Militarum Index. I have not listed as Imperial Guard Index. And I realized I did that without even thinking, and I am hanging my head in shame right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to rename it right now, uh, back, to, back to the freaking Guard Index. But anyway, that's what we're here to review. We're doing Guard, baby. We are here to discuss and disseminate the, the mighty hammer of the Emperor and give you guys their index review. Uh, for those who do not know, uh, Out of War is a pro- sorry, Out of War Down Under is a two part podcast. Predominantly, we're here to review new content for the game of competitive 40K. We're here to keep you informed and be your one stop shop for everything you need to know to stay current, to stay relevant, and to keep up with this ever evolving, ever changing, a great game we love. Uh, if you would like to get the second part of this episode or the second part of any of my shows, please go over to Patreon and search Art of War Down Under. David, your turn to plug, mate. I say podcast, uh, hosted with a extremely good player called Vic VJ, uh, who finished rank two in the world last year. I finished rank four in the world last year. Uh, we talk about everything, but we just, you know, keep it really frank. Uh, we talk about just hardcore competitive Warhammer. Uh, we try and distill it into just high quality stuff. But I got to say, Adam, I think you might be one of the most hardest working content producers in 40 <laughs> I've seen the number of slots and organization you are putting together recording like no tomorrow (laughs) i am uh yeah i have no chill i have no chill uh am i (laughs) it's weird yeah i was really lax until i got a patron and as soon as people started paying for my stuff i became a demon i assumed something awoke inside me the bell rug it it, too too greedily and too deep and now my thirst for making content knows no bounds um oh god yeah it's it's uh it's terrifying Go fucking, if this is only available to patrons, then I want to thank you on behalf of Adam. Oh, but if this is available to other people, what are you doing? Go subscribe to Adam. That's right. Super that's hard. right. That's he, right, baby. like, absolutely loves the game, knows what he's talking about. Ah. Uh. So Adam's like, fuck that. That's terrible. Why are you taking that? Take this. Table people. Get, you know, get those dubs. <laughs> I'm not, no cap. That's uh, that's how Adam rolls. I love this it. is the this is the part one. This is everybody's gonna uh, gonna, <laughs> yes. gonna hear this one. Write in those f bombs, by the way. Say those are part two. We swear a little bit on part two. You got Seamus gonna have to bleep those bad boys now. Uh, give, give my poor editor more work. I'm already like I'm hitting him up at all hours, being like, "Can you get this win done in by this deadline?" Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm freaking him out. But um, hey, I'm paying him whatever. <laughs> <laughs> when he's when he's burnt out, maybe I'll be burnt out too. But anyway, we're here to break down the Astra Miller what? The Astra Miller Guard. Thank you very much. Um, and we're going to give you guys the lowdown and the full index review that we've been doing for so many other factions and tell you everything you need to know about the Guard. If, you don't, if this is your first time joining us because you are a tread head and you're just here to enjoy the, uh, the Hammer of the Emperor, we're going to be giving you a deep dive of all the rules and then picking out our select best in slot, best option um, data sheets. We don't have the time to go through every data sheet i don't want to put you through that if you want to do that there are there are plenty other content pieces you can get to we're going to talk here for just the relevant stuff just the competitively good nuanced things that either you need to know as a person who's going to be playing against guard what they do how they're going to hit you how they're going to come at you or if you're a guard player wanting to know what we think is the hot takes so mate the most important part of our guard is that they can issue orders in the command phase correct What they can do is this changed a little bit. You used to be able to order an issue to a unit and then hit everything within range of that mm-hmm. unit. Now, I'm pretty sure if you didn't play guard, you probably just eyes glazed over when your opponent Correct. was like, yeah, I'm going to go order this order. But 
Each officer can only order things within six inches of themselves. Apart from a tank commander, they can order things within 12. So if your opponent's doing that, just, you know, hey, you know, that within six inches, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But there's way less orders now. They've kind of condensed them down. They've taken maybe the, the okay, they haven't taken the best. They've just taken mostly the uh, regiment or the infantry ones. They've condensed yep. them down. So there's about six of them now. One is just three inches of movement. Move, move, move. That's a classic <laughs> name. The next one is fixed bayonets. Improve your weapon skill by one. And these can go in any units, by the way. They can go in Correct. tanks or whatever like that. Correct. Um, this used to be plus one AP and plus one weapon skill, but just weapon skill by one now. Take aim. Ballistic skill by one. Improved. Uh, first rank fire. Second rank fire. Gives you an additional... Uh, improve the attacks characteristics of rapid fire with equip... Of rapid fire weapons equipped by models in this unit by one. So, mm-hmm. oh, it's only plus one attack. Um, yeah. Because you get plus one more rapid fire. Take cover. Improve the save characteristic of models in this unit by one. Uh, you can never improve it to more than three plus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and duty and honor, which you'll probably never see, improve the leadership and objective control characteristic of models models in this unit by one. Now, yeah. what you're going to be seeing the most commonly there is take aim, improve the ballistic skill of ranged weapons equipped by models in this unit by one. And what you'll probably be seeing that mostly from is Lord Solar Leontis, who can, or a tank commander, maybe, who can uh, order tanks, and they'll probably put that on their indirect fire. You might see take cover on the infantry, and you might see move, move, move just on the infantry as well, just to do secondaries and stuff, I think. Yeah. I will apologize in advance. Uh, we are recording this without any future knowledge of uh, balanced data slates or anything mm. coming for the day one FAQs. I am recording as many as these can ahead of time. So apologies if any of this information is invalid and should there be a nerf to indirect fire coming up because we are going to be hyping up <laughs> indirect fire because it was one yes. of the best things that this army does and one of the things that lets it hang with the other really, really super powerful factions at the moment. So this is replacing uh, the orders in the past. And of course, it's off. if anything has the officer keyword, you can issue, you know, or, or in view of tank commander, tank officer, whatever, anything within mm-hmm. six or 12. Um, is, what's the next best? Because I, I, I got to say, when I first read Duty and Honor, I, of course, I read it before I played any games of 10th edition. And I thought, wow, that's going to come up. And it has never come up. <laughs> yeah, the problem is, so this used to be very powerful because yeah. it used to make your model objective secured. And that would be, doesn't you know, now, but now OC just linearly scales, right? So everything's got objective control, but, you know, um, you know, it might be two objective control, it might be five objective control. So what you would do is, you know, put this on a tank in the, middle, yeah. in the beginning of your command phase, and then all of a sudden, you know, your opponent didn't have any objective secured on it, and you get objective secured. Mm-hmm. So that was like a black and white binary place where objective secured was much better. It's nowhere near as good. Out. Leadership is, you know, completely irrelevant for the most part. Mm-hmm. The battle shock doesn't really matter at all. Um, so, yeah, you're probably not going to be seeing it that much. It's important to know that these have changed orders. They do last until the next command phase. So previously they used to drop off at all random times like yes. until the end of your fight phase, until yeah. the end Duty of your phase. next command phase, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah. They've changed a little bit. Your opponent's probably just going to be take aiming a bunch of stuff, but it's important to know that only Leontis and the tank commander can order uh, take aim to um, to two other vehicles. So yeah, yeah. Uh, most notably, that's the big one you're going to be seeing. Yeah, most notably indirect pieces. Uh, yeah. Now, do right. you want to um, go over the really deep and com- intricate? Detachment rule, Adam. Uh, let's do it. So this is Born Soldiers. Each time an Astro Militar unit from your army remains stationary until the end of the turn. Raged weapons equipped by models in the unit have the lethal hits ability. So six is to hit auto wounds still, but only if you haven't moved. And that's in there. Um, combined regiment detachment rule of, of Born Soldiers now. So it used to be just all the freaking time, and now it's conditional. Yep. Uh, so this is basically irrelevant for anything that's not an indirect fire piece. Correct. You might have a big tank like a Rogal Dawn that might stay still. But um, obviously the old Born Soldiers Adam used to be six to hit automatically wound. Uh, yep. But now the remain stationary caveat there is uh, very difficult to adhere yeah. to unless you're remaining stationary for other purposes like gaining plus one to hit from heavy weapons so for example yeah is it weird that i after i read this i went back and read the, the orders because i just like oh maybe there's an order to remain yeah, state don't remain to remaining stationary but no there's not so there's no there's no major yeah. and there's nothing that i've majorly found that links back to this this is just nice if you got it doesn't come up that often yeah very bizarre we all i think assumed that there was going to be a remain stationary because there mm. already was a remain stationary exactly order. right but, yeah, um, exactly. but no, they weren't. But um, on to enhancements. Now, I wouldn't say Guard have the best enhancements. There's probably only two that you're going to take. Mm-hmm. One is called, uh, they've got the Death Mask of uh, Olenius, which is, um, you know, terrible. If your opponent <laughs> has that, probably just laugh. Um, uh, it, uh, it increases the objective secure, objective control of, okay, 
the the unit's objective control can never be less than one. Okay, who cares? Doesn't do yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, that better be three points, literally. Otherwise, I'm not buying. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is uh, drill commander, officer unit, officer model only. While you're leading a unit, if that unit remains stationary, a critical hit is on a five plus mm-hmm. instead of six plus, where you would otherwise remain stationary for born soldiers. You could put this on a tank commander because a tank yep. commander is an officer. But once again, you'd have to remain stationary as well. So mm-hmm. quite difficult to achieve that one. They've got the uh, classic Vect Kurov's Aquila, which yep. is once per battle after your opponent's used to stratagem, uh, increase the battle cost of the CP. Now, there's been a really uh, an interesting innovation on this one, Adam. Yep. They said in the order of operations for modifying characteristics that if you increase the cost, ba- basically, if you increase the cost of a stratagem, say if I want to increase the cost of Overwatch, mm-hmm. uh, and then you have an ability, uh, um, and your opponent has a model in their army that makes stratagem for free, you must then make the stratagem free, and then the uh, mod- modifier Modify plus kicks one in. CP yeah. kicks in. So it actually works against those abilities that make your stratagems free. It's so made it so much better. Like, yes. so much better. I think these are now premium effects in the game. Yes, they're very, very good. Or Phantasm, for example. You know. mm-hmm. So I'd probably um, try and find space for Curves Aquila. Really good. Uh, grand strategist. Oh, you know, you know, you might want to use it on armor of contempt, right? Yeah. So if you're going against desolation marines, um, um, you know they have to pay one CP for it now if they were otherwise getting it for free. Overwatch. Overwatch. <laughs> Overwatch. Yes. Yeah. Immediately on your opponent's Overwatch, <laughs> like bang, and every game. We've got one uh, grand strategist, which I think is probably the best one here. Uh, yeah. Officer model only in your command phase. The beric can order one additional order, Correct. which you may take on a tank commander if you think the points are worth it. But we can get into that later. You want to run me through the uh, strats, Adam? Let's do it, mate. Uh, all right, first up is reinforcements. This is 2 CP, which is when any phase target one regiment unit from your army that was just destroyed. You can use this stratagem, uh, even though it was just destroyed. The effect, add a yep. new unit to your army, identical to the one destroyed in strategic reserves at the start. Uh, sorry, add a starting strike with all those wounds remaining. The restriction is it cannot be used to do return destroyed character units to your uh, to your attached units. So if you have a unit of, I think the one I've seen used the most is the Death Core twenty man blob with a okay. primary psyker in it to give it the invuln save. When that dies, you yeah. can pay two CP to bring back the twenty man. Does not come back with the um, primary psyker. Mm. That guy remains yeah. deaded. Uh, next right. up, we have one CP. Sorry, did you have anything to note on reinforcements? Yeah. Oh, this one. <laughs> actually, the first trade is actually uh, very important. Um, banger. Yeah. Because so you can use it on sentinels, which is yes. very important. Yep. Now. Uh, if, let me ask you a question, Adam. If my unit is destroyed, can I use Ursula Creed's ability to target a unit within 12 inches to make your stratagem free? Ooh, I'd <laughs> say no. It's a trick question because normally you couldn't, right? Because your you, yeah. your model is destroyed and it's removed from the table. But so there's a little quip that I discovered on this one mm-hmm. is that you can use this only on units that have deadly demise because what ends up happening is that your model is destroyed Deadly Demise says, do not remove your model from play. Instead, roll a dice to see whether or not it's Deadly Demise triggers. So what happens is that your model's destroyed. You yep. use Ursula's Creed ability because that's when the tr- stratagem triggers. When your model was destroyed, your model is still on the battlefield. Oh. You trigger the ability, and then you roll the Deadly Demise. Then, so, you can yeah. use- so why this is big is because you could use this twice in a turn. Uh, you could use it when one Sentinel unit dies, and then you could use it for free on that Sentinel unit with Ursula Creed as well, which we'll get onto later. So, yeah, potentially quite cool. And you get all the Hunter Killing missiles back from the you Sentinels. You do. You um, do. So, so yeah. I, I have seen that I think at WTC they have ruled that you do not regenerate with your one-shoot weapons, and that was a ruling made oh. exclusively for, I believe, Sentinels and Demolition Charges from GSC. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, they even agreed that it rules as written. It's 100% not the case, but for the yeah. sake of sanity and <laughs> stability of I the game. I think the Demo Charge one is uh, <laughs> probably a good call, to be honest yeah. with you. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So the, the Sentinels have been hit by that kind of more, let's be reasonable people here. Yeah. Um, um, adjustment, but we will see what happens with the rest. Um, but as for your ma- your generalist match play rules, you just play them as they get their their HKMs back, hundred yep. percent. Suppression yeah. fire up next, one CP. When you're shooting phase, target one Ashmel time infantry unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot this phase, and one enemy unit excluding monsters or vehicles. The effect: 
If that your extra military time unit scores one or more hits against that enemy unit in this phase until the end of your, your opponent's next turn, each time model that unit makes an attack subtract one from the hit roll. So one CP and you get a hit on the unit if they're not a monster or a vehicle, and then minus one to hit. Actually, really big because a lot a lot of things don't have a massive amount of rerolls and hit on fours, and it's actually a really big thing in the mirror match. Okay, interesting. I'm yes. just going to say this is terrible. Never play it. No, no, um, I was going to say pretty much never play it. You'll find maybe one game in five where you can. I'm thinking stuff okay, like yeah. like crisis suits. 500 points of crisis suits, giving them minus one to hit for one CP. It's probably going to save a, a whole crisis unit. Crisis suits are now vehicles, Adam. Are, are they actually? Oh, they are vehicles now, aren't they? <laughs> I'm sorry, you picked the one bad example. I did. I picked the one take awful example. Yeah, yeah never mind. That's true. But yeah, fair. Um, not the worst. In fact, guard, you do have a lot of CP. So, yeah, you, you know, yeah. it's, not, um, uh, it's not relevant. But you are correct. Like this, this is a one in five games when some, your opponent has one very relevant unit. If you get this on yeah, Desolation you know what it's Marines, good against. Sure, why not? I mean, hey, Custodian Wardens, man. That is cute. Wow, yeah. that is actually cute. Nice one's it. It's big for those, <laughs> yeah. you know, for those big blip, for those big Two, bricks. Yeah, twos to threes. It's hilarious. Um, I would fuels of uh, fires. Two CP. When you're shooting phase one regiment or squadron unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot this phase effect after your unit has resolved its attack, select one enemy unit that was targeted by one or more of those attacks. To the end of the phase, each time attack is made against that enemy unit by a regiment or squadron model from your army, unless the attacking unit is battle shocked, improve the AP of that attack by one. Two CP. Mm -hmm. After you've resolved attacks, one enemy unit that was targeted, you get more better at shooting uh, for 2 CP for the rest of your army. That's what it said. Uh, uh, this is actually very good, though. <laughs> this is extremely yeah. good. This is really good because it combos with all your indirects. So what Correct. you might do is you have a, one unit of heavy weapon squads, and you have one mortar, and you shoot mm -hmm. your one mortar, mm -hmm. and you split it somewhere else, and you mm -hmm. use fields of fire, then all your manticores and all your basilisks get plus one AP. Pop. And plus one AP on indirect is really, really Huge. big. And it's big... kind of combos, I was going to say, this kind of combos with the next strat, mm. expert bombardiers. Like, did you say, go ahead. Do you want, oh, can I drag on? Oh, yeah. Expert bombardiers. It's pretty, it's a pretty tough to, to pull off, though. But um, what you can do is, uh, at the start of your shooting phase, select one Astro Militarum unit from your army with a Vox caster, so it's probably your infantry here. Uh, and one enemy unit that's visible to your unit, not the Voxcaster, to your unit, and visible, doesn't have a ranged uh, discrepancy. Until the end of the phase, each time an Astro Militarum model from your army makes an attack with an indirect fire weapon that targets the enemy unit, unless the attacking model is battle shocked, add one to the hit roll. So really plus one to hit, good. you're indirect. One mm -hmm. CP. What you can do is you can put 10 little guys in outflank, you know, mm -hmm. maybe do a secondary. You don't even need to do anything with them. So, you know. It's great. It just says one Astro Militarum unit from your army equipped with a Vox Custer. You can still be, uh, you can still do an action that's eligible to shoot and use the stratagem to spot with them too. Correct. So, pretty sick. Uh, man, sent, uh, sorry, Scion still deep strike, can still take yep. a five man on 25 mil bases that can have Oof. a Vox Custer. Yep. Just an absolute activator. I, th I mean, when we, I seem to remember us doing the Marine episode a while ago, and we were talking about how good some of the land speeder variants are. Imagine yeah. if that was just like 25 mil, f five guys at 25 yeah. mil and deep strike for like zero, essentially zero points. For sure. Sounds and there's another good. unit uh, we'll get onto in a bit here that has the similar land speeder ability that you're going to want to play as mm. well. Uh, All right. Combos. Next Inspired up, command. What's up? Com yeah, one CP, your opponent's command phase, one astronaut time officer unit from your army. Your officer can issue one order as if it was your command phase. Your officer cannot issue that order to a Battleshock unit. Now, the best one for this mm -hmm. um, is, is actually the take cover, right? Yes, so for when sure. Your opponent, yeah. yeah, you know, you pretty much know you swung and you've missed. The retaliation is coming. You slap take cover on a unit um, and you try and weather the storm. I do mm -hmm. think this could be okay for duty and honor in a very niche situation. Yes, and a very so yeah. What you can do is you can um, if you do. Oh, it's in your opponent's command. Oh, yes, but maybe yeah. But most uh, and unfortunately, um, you know, you can put on your big bricks for sure. But un unfortunately, both the armored sentinel and the scout sentinel how now have a respective two up save and three up save. Mm -hmm. So you actually can't duty and honor um, the sentinels, which is the ideal target you would want to do. Right, you'd want yeah. to order them up, go shoot something, inspired command, put the saves up to a two up. But um, they already have good saves already, so yeah, it's it's a niche one, but um, it's it's definitely not bad. You know, you might want to go plus one ballistic skill, or plus one whipping yep. skill, maybe if you got some melee. You might want to go first rank five, second rank five. They you know they're going deep strike. You can overwatch them with plus one shots. So not the worst, but take cover probably the most one you're going to use. Yeah. yeah. All right. Last one is armored might. This is two CP. When your opponent's shooting phase, just after an enemy unit has selected its targets, the target is one astro military time vehicle unit from your army that was selected as the target of one or more of those attacking units' attacks. 
Uh, the effect until the end of the phase, each time an attacking attack is allocated to your unit, subtract one from the damage. So it's two CP, yeah. minus one damage, just in the shooting phase, but still pretty damn good. Well, very good, actually, yeah. Mm. So um, this can be free with Ursula Creed as well. Correct. And it's and it's a, it's an ace stratagem that you want to use in your opponent's turn. So uh, really, I remember when I played my first initial games of Guard, I was using this a lot. Admittedly, I was playing a Rogal Dawn as well. So Rogal Dawn with Creed and an Engine Seer, pretty hard to kill. Dude, uh, yeah. you know. And that guy just is one of the very few things in the game that just gets to exist in the open in night yes. position. Just, yes, uh, in, this, just, in this meta, yes. <laughs> yeah, chuck it up on the line and just make them overcommit. And then even if they overcommit, they still might not get it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah I, I so, like that um, a lot. That's the suite of stratagems. You've got, you know, one defensive one for one, um, you know, minus one damage. You've got some to amplify your indirect fire. And you've got reinforcements, which is essentially... You know, out of out of all the stratagems here, I think reinforcements is maybe the build around stratagem, right? Correct. The stratagem you can maybe thematically make an army or an archetype around, uh, and then you've got stuff like expert bombardiers or fields of fire, primarily that are going to amplify your uh, indirect damage, yep. regardless. Yeah. Or hundred percent. So as soon as I saw reinforcements, I went straight to the the uh, the Sentinel data sheet and just yeah. checked that out. And then uh, the points are out as of, as of we're recording this. Points are out right now, and I can tell you, um, I think I think it's Scout Sentinels over Armor Sentinels. I don't think Armor Sentinels are bad. We're probably going to yeah. go to those data sheets pretty soon. But fifty points um, or one hundred and fifty points for three uh, Scout Sentinels extremely good value for 2CP to re-rack them yeah. and keep them coming back. Um, yeah, most definitely. Nine Scout yeah. Sentinels? I couldn't mm-hmm. judge you. That's, no, good. That's a good pick. Not. <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I've already seen games and heard of games where people have killed 12 Sentinels, you know, uh, and then, you know, yeah. been overwhelmed by the 15th Sentinel and stuff like that <laughs> uh, because, you know, 2CP slapping it down and getting them back. Um, I have sure. seen um, Fields of Fire come up. And I have seen yep. expert bombardiers both come up. I've yet to see um, suppression inspired command um, be played judiciously. And I haven't yep. played, or I myself haven't played, or none of the guys I'm playing um, have tried the armored might build with the Rogal Dawn. Because I think that is the build. You, could, you may be able to get away with it with like a Lehman Russ, a Bane Blade possibly being another yeah. option. Um, but yeah, but you want to play uh, you want to play it with the Drogo Dawn and Ursula agree to make it free, yeah. For sure. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, but you know, having said that, uh, you know, a lot of respect to what you said, Adam. The suppression fire thing, it's really important, uh, as a side note, kind of developing as a Warhammer player to think about where you could use these niche scenarios because Get value. they do yeah. come up. Um mm-hmm. and, and when they do come up, they're quite good. You know, just like I said, but against the Warden Brick, for example, right? It's really powerful. And you know, an Astro Militarum infantry unit is actually a heavy weapon squad, right? So mm-hmm. a heavy weapon squad has indirect fire as well. So actually you could potentially do that from anywhere on the board. So yes. you could potentially even do that on Desolation Marine. So actually, you know what? The boys think about it. I wrote it off initially, but um, there are some, there definitely are some use cases there, I think. Yeah, I think just keeping it on Desso's all game is not, and just yeah. taking a percentage of their output for the entire game um, yeah. is not an awful option. And like you said, there you do get, I think between Ursula and Lord Solar, you get kind of more CP than just about anybody else in the game playing guard. Yeah, I think you get the most, yeah. So yeah. let's jump to the big boy. It used to be about 170 bucks, but uh, it got a little bit cheaper because, you know, you kind of have to pay tax to have stuff with them, right? <laughs> Otherwise, you just get shot off the board. Correct. So, um, yeah, Lord Solar, he gives you a CP at the start of the, your command phase. One additional CP, which is a hugely powerful ability. Incredible. And then he has also got another fantastic ability, which they have clarified in the commentator's rules. Uh, redeploy. So after both players have deployed their armies, you, well, okay, this is slightly irrelevant because the commentary uh, changes this, but uh, you get to redeploy after the you know who goes first, which is one of the most powerful abilities in the world, uh, well, in the game. So, you know, two of the best abilities on a data sheet, and very importantly, He's an officer and can issue up orders to three Astra Militarum yeah. units. units. So he can order to anything. He's the mm-hmm. top dog. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And it's so funny that so many other units lost wounds, so many other characters lost wounds, and Lodzola mm-hmm. is literally man on horse is eight wounds still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. So funny. I've got, like, Asriel, I've got uh, Hellbrecht down to, like, five wounds now. 
um, from like <laughs> six, seven, whatever. And literally regular man on horse, eight wounds. It's so funny. Uh, he's still got a great pistol, which is, you know, two shots at strength eight minus two, two. And in combat, he's still got six attacks at hitting on twos at six, two, two as well. And then he's got yep. his little stompy hooves. Um, I think he's bordering on an auto take. He's so good. And what did you say? So, he, was, he was 170? 100, 115. No, he used oh, to be 170. That's he's 115 right. now. Oh, but, man, uh, you know, he did uh, lose, he did lose, uh, you know, half damage, four up and vulnerable, four rerolls to hit on a unit and stuff like that. So, you know, his data sheet has changed dramatically. Um, but I think he's fairly costed because you need to pay probably the 65 points to either have a bodyguard or to have a 10 man, uh, unit accompany him, right? Otherwise he's just going to get shot off the board. Correct. He's just going to get blown up. Yeah. Um, we will talk about Ursula Creed because I think she was one Ooh, of the yeah. bigger glow-ups. I mean, it was really interesting that everyone thought she was extremely good and an auto-take upon release, but that was when there was a lot of jank to be had with how her rules worked and the doubling mm. and tripling of the strength effect. When they ruled that you could <laughs> yeah. get it on the first instance of, of one and you could yes. bounce them off and then replace them and all this other crap when you were doing all the, the bubble door yes. uh, Orders. That's when I dropped her. Yep. Yeah, that's when everyone dropped her. Um, so now she is a four wound toughness three, essentially five up involved uh, co- company commander like anybody else would be. Um, whilst model is eating a unit, that unit can be affected by two orders at the same time, which is quite nice, but I've yet to find yeah. a huge instance mm. of that being relevant. Yep. Um, and the tactical Jesus rule is the reason you take her, which is once per battle round, one unit from your army within 12 of this model can be targeted of a stratagem for zero TP, even if another unit from your army has already been targeted for that stratagem. So between her and Lord Solar, he's giving you one more every turn, and then Ursula mm-hmm. can make essentially up to two CP of value every turn in, yep. in a free order. And how, so much, you- how much would you value two CP? At, uh, you know, how much would you value a free strat every battle round? Well, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, so this could be a funny little, uh, you know, tangent. In <laughs> in I've, I've asked this question in 8th edition and in 9th edition, and the value proposition did change for players. In 8th edition, people said they'd be happy to pay up to 50 points for a CP. Like, if you said, okay, mm-hmm. everyone starts at zero CP, but for every 50 points in your list that you start under 2,000, you get a CP. Mm. How many mm. would you be willing to, how, how many how many points would you be willing to take to a game? Mm. And that has been an interesting little goalpost moving maneuver I've done every edition. I'm going to do it for this yeah. one as well. People <laughs> were, pa- were happy to pay up to 35 on average in ninth edition, down from 50. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So no longer willing to pay 50. Because- well, she's 55 points, Adam, and you can get up to 10 CP because you can use a 2 CP strat every battle every round. Battle round <laughs> mate. So how many, how, many, how many points would you pay for a CP? From what you've seen of Index ninth edition, how many wow. points would you take off your list for you a know, CP? You know, I think it really depends on the build because one, two CP starting turn one could have a huge impact on some Correct. armies. Correct. Correct. You know, on the right in the right army, like I'm thinking, uh, demons actually would really benefit it. You know, I could see 65, 70 points probably. Nice. All right. On in, the on the on the right army though. Yeah. In the co- in the comments, pick up the the ball we are dropping. How many points would you pay for a CP in ninth edition? Yeah. Let us uh, know. Let us know. All right. Which um, data sheet would you like to go to next? Yeah, I'll just skip through. So, you know, you've got the normal range of officers, blah de blah. You've got your you've got your um you know platoon command squad, you've got your Kadia command squad. These are functionally the same as they were before. Very- You're probably not gonna play them because if you take Ursula Creed and you also take Lord Sol Leontis, you're gonna have all the regimental orders you want because yeah. you're not gonna be playing a very infantry based game regardless. But there was one big boy that when this guy got spoiled, I hit the roof. <laughs> this guy was like, oh my god, I can't believe they printed this. The tank commander. Yeah. Now, the tank commander is the other officer that can order squadron units. It's the other officer that can order your vehicles. So apart from the Leontis, no one else can do it. So if you take a tank commander, you really want to invest in the um, relic that lets you order twice. So you'll yep. be able to order two yep. squadron units. So he's got your standard array of, you know, what is now free because you can get plasma sponsons and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, you can take any really Lehman Rust gun or whatever like that. And uh, we won't get into nuances of that. Um, but he has, um, he can order, he can order people from 12 inches away because he orders vehicles. But on a two plus, this guy shoots on death. It's so, huge. Um, it's with so funny. Every single gun, not just the turret gun, every single gun. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can give him plus one ballistic skill because, um, well, that's an order you've got now. Uh, so, you know, that's, uh, that's quite interesting. He's also, he doesn't have squadron himself, but you can order him with Leontis. So, yeah, two plus shoot on death. Um, it's really powerful, but mm. it's a huge drawback to this guy. He's 240 points. And, and he only hits on fours now. So he needs that take yes. game to really generate value for you. Yeah. 
And honestly, 240 points. I don't think I want to... Well, I want to, well you want to play the Relic as well, don't you? So mm-hmm. the Relic, I believe, is... Um, uh, I think it's 20 points for Drill Commander. So 260 points, yeah. points it's a to lot. order both of your other, you know, second mandicles. It's way too many points for me, I think. Yeah, I me, don't me think he's worth playing, me personally, too. which is sad because, I've, you know, it's gutted one of the uh, heroic I mean, It's a bit of a weird rule to put on someone. It's two plus. Yeah. One death, you know? yeah. Like, Legitimately, yeah. though, he's toughness 11 with a two plus armor and 13 wounds. The guy is. It, uh, who would have thought? He's a tank. The tank is a tank. <laughs> it's a, what a surprise. Yeah. Um, and there are a bunch of good guns. What's your go to loadout if you had one? Oh, man, it's so difficult. Look, I think the problem here is that um, AP and cover saves are so different these days that you know AP 1 and 2 doesn't really cut it. Um, I would almost be tempted to play the 24-inch gun. I would obviously play all the plasma guns you can. Um, and, you know, I'd play the LAS cannon as well. But, you know, it just really depends on, on your meta, really. I, you know, I couldn't fault you if you said, look, I want to play the Vanquisher because you're probably playing a large battery of indirect. The Vanquisher is like one of the big one-shot guns, you know. Um, you're probably playing a large battery of indirect too, which is going to be good into your, um, you know, anti-infantry profiles anyway. So if you took that, I couldn't laugh. You know, I couldn't say no. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I like the Demolisher a lot at the moment. I don't love the range, but you move 10, so you kind of th- at 34 inches, which is a huge amount of the table these days anyway. So I, I like the Demolisher a lot. And, of course, pl- Plasma Cannon spon- sponsors, even if multi melters are free, uh, Blast D3 is just such an OP yeah, keyword yeah. that I think the it's better. They're really good, yeah. The only issue with the 24-inch range gun is that you're often going to be want to be within 12 inches of your indirect. So to order your indirect and then uh, you know go and still shoot your guns, it's quite short range. So that's the only thing to consider when you do that, but it doesn't mean you can't make it work. That for sure. We'll skip through the rest of the data oh, sheets. The only, th- oh. only thing I'd like to point out is that the Platoon Command Squad now joins units like as a, as a yes. five platoon. So if you joined a 20 brick of infantry, you'd have a unit of 25, and then you could also join a primary <laughs> psycho and go to 26. And there there is like a little combo piece there, which we'll probably unpack into part two more deeply. Please. Yes. What's the next sure. uh, data sheet you want to go to? Yeah, let's just keep skipping down. You know, they've got the normal array of uh, characters and what well, like that. Gorn's ghosts have changed. People, but pretty, we've got... people are pretty high on Gorn's ghosts. Oh, okay. You want me to cover them? Yeah. Yeah. So they are. You know, guard doesn't have a lot of lone operative. Uh, Gorn's ghosts are okay. The problem here is that um, they do infiltrate and have lone operative, which is a good combo. Don't get me wrong, but. Lone Operative is really a defining ability that you want to take for as cheap as you possibly can. A lot of people nowadays are playing Lone Operative not for you know, the data sheet itself, but really just for a Lone Operative. The model could be a servitor for all we yeah. right? Yeah. You want to stand an objective and get Lone Op. They, you know, they've got a four damage sniper rifle, which is, you know, it's cute, right? Uh, your opponent, it's extremely linear in the way in which, um, you know, it plays. You know, you can go up at the end of your opponent's turn and then re deep strike which is, you know, it's interesting. It's not bad. They're 115 points, but there's another character with lone operative that I'm going to get to. Uh, this, this oh, straight Sly. There, the Sly one. So I played this guy a lot. Uh, if you if you if saw any of my lists, I, uh, I played him second place at the Weimar Fist uh, Champs. Um, he is uh, not as good as he used to be, I don't think. He's 75 points, but, you know, that's the kind of price point you want to play for lone op. Uh, although, guard, do they need lone operative out of any army in the game? Probably, you know, probably not, right? Because they got a lot of tanky stuff. It's still nice um, to have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know what? If you're playing, if you're playing Sly Marbo, the chances are you're winning one way or another, anyway, right? So um, <laughs> <laughs> he's got infiltrators, lone operative, stealth, um, eat, and he's got a really fun ability. So whenever someone shoots a unit within three inch, whenever someone shoots a unit that's within three inches of Sly Marbo, he can shoot back. He can shoot he's got back. One man army, yep. but he's only got a twelve inch gun, um, yep. and then. Each time this unit is shot, if it's not within an engagement range uh, of any enemy units, it can make a normal move as if it was your movement phase. So uh, I guess what you could do is you could probably, someone shoots you, you know, you can then shoot Sly Marbo, and then you can fight like a shadow so you can move him again, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you can sort of bounce around the board and stuff. He's actually not bad. Uh, if melee was more prevalent, he's not that bad because you can, you can park him next to um, next to units 
and then you know threatened to shoot people at the yeah range. so i mean i had a yeah. cute little combo where i was trying to take strachan with 20 catachans and marbo because strachan is strachan slaps he's got six attacks at, at uh, hitting on twos at two six two two and then marbo's got five at five one two and like for, for like it, it will surprise people when they try and close with you and all of a sudden you actually just punch their teeth in uh yeah but uh it wasn't worth the points i don't think yeah, it's it's really. I mean, I was the only one making melee guard work uh, for, for the end there at ninth edition, but uh, it's tough. Even I couldn't get struck into work. <laughs> um, oh, I guess you know, talking about ninth edition, uh, the Cassican, they're they're pretty similar to what they were before. Uh, yeah, they've got this. All this. All their guns are basically the same. So, and that was the real diversity that you could get of them. Uh, in your command phase, they can order. A, they can order themselves. Mm-hmm. So that's quite nice. They kind of operate independently. They've got the Voxcaster. So. You know, you can use that strat that we talked about uh, to get plus one to hit. So these guys are an interesting unit to potentially outflank, uh, come in. Uh, they won't be able to order them stuff because it's in your command phase. But, um, you know, and then I loads of damage. It's, you know, 120 points or 110 points for 10 off the top of my head. So a little bit pricey. You can order them for, co- uh, you know, uh, to take cover. So they go up to three up base save. So that's not bad. Um, and at that point, you know, you're actually paying Space Marine costs for... Uh, for your defensive profile there, apart from yeah. your T3, you know, your 4 um, upset. They also have Scout 6, which a lot of people have missed. So in lieu of being able to Deep Strike or anything like that, they have Scout 6, which they will confer to a transport should they be in one, which I think is a nice little tech piece there. So I, I think Kassikin are nowhere near as good as they They're not the auto take they were in previous edition, but I do think they're still a very relevant choice if you wanted them. Um, I personally yeah, prefer, sure. I prefer Scions over them at the moment, yeah. um, just for the just because the Deep Strike is Deep Strike. Yeah, the natural deep strike is nice, but the Chimera also has open uh, firing deck too. Correct. So you yep. could fire with those two melter guns maybe, or you could fire with those two uh, plasma guns, or if you take two flamers, you get four flamers on your Chimera. Okay, yep. that's Boy. not bad. Yeah. Overwatch is pretty good. It yeah, is. yeah, so um, skip over the Regimental Preacher. He's still awful. Uh, Sergeant Harker, no surprise there. He's quite terrible again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, Katachan Jungle Fighters, mate. I mean, you know, I don't know how, I don't know how long they're going to be bad for. But, yes. <laughs> but now we're up to one of the uh, the the premium tech pieces of the thing. Yeah. The regimental you run me through this guy. Yeah. Regimental Engineer will run you forty five points. Uh, mm-hmm. His toughness four has a three plus save and three wounds, so it's just like a friggin' Space Marine sergeant. Uh, yeah. It's still do not expect him to do anything in combat. Uh, what is modeled in three? Oh, he, he will surprise you. Three attacks <laughs> at six at hitting on four six two two. But if he's in combat, why are you there? Um, and then he's got a servo arm for one another hit at the same exactly the same profile. Yeah. Why is it? Why anyway? You know, he's got four attacks hitting on fours at six two two. Hilarious. Yeah. Um, so whilst this model is in three or one or more friendly Astro Militari and vehicle units, it has lone operative. Nice. nice. Astro Militari, so uh, the Omnisized Size Blessing. In your command phase, this is the heal ability. One um, Astro Militari and vehicle within three regains D3 lost wounds until the start of your next command phase. That vehicle model has a four plus invulnerable safe. Nice. Uh, wow. And then lastly, if a friendly Astro Militari and vehicle is destroyed within 12 until the end of the, the battle, <laughs> this model agency's axe <laughs> has six attacks. Yeah. Uh, you were saying? <laughs> No, no, he's still not going to do anything. That's no, man, this model is this is like the best melee model in the whole fucking book. Oh, in the whole freaking uh, book, I mean, he's going to walk up with his six attacks. He's going to hit with three of them, wound with two of them, and they're going to make a save. <laughs> with your seven attacks, you get an additional servo on it. Still going to hit with three. You're going to get the worst side of the averages. Let's not beat around the bush. No, but the four plus invulnerable save is literally why you're taking this guy. The heal is yeah. nice. Who cares? It's 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 cool when you when you can get a three on it. Sometimes yeah. you're going to get a one, but just slapping down a four up invuln on a tank with. Within three is actually crazy. Yeah. So I used to think this. I used to think this was really, really good. But in my experience in playing the game, I've seldom realized that actually having a two-up save on like a tank commander or a rogue with dawn, you actually don't need a four-up and vulnerable because you're going to be in cover, and most of the time you'll be taking either a three-up against AP two, you'll be taking a three four-up against AP four, AP three, and then if you get hit with AP four, i.e. a las cannon, then you're taking five up. So you're only one worse save in that circumstance. So you're only like what? 20% worse save or something at that rate. So actually for 45 points, he's, he's okay. If you're playing a Rogal Dawn, I would play one. And that's actually a point where you can get the multiple D3 wounds lost back. And, you know, you can use Ursula Creed to minus two, minus one damage often. You, know, you could pop smoke, for minus one to hit, four up and one. Makes the Dawn quite a difficult target for a lot of people to deal with. So he's, um, he's not bad. I couldn't blame you. Maybe there's a build there where you can play um, Sentinels, and three regimental engineers to you know get some combat going 
You know? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> get, you, get your one of your Sentinels killed and then your engine seers pop off. That'd be funny as hell. <laughs> if there was yeah. any way to give make them hit be, then better on them better than fours, I'd be down. Like if you can give them Okay. I mean, you well, can order you can, you can, you can order order them. them. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so you're gonna put three you're gonna all of Lord Solar's orders are gonna go on three engine seers <laughs> and they're gonna hit on threes for you with yeah. twenty one attacks. At strength six yeah. minus two two. It's actually it's pretty sound, bad. Actually sounds cr- badass, <laughs> hell, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Well, uh, going on, you know, we've got the random assortment of bulgrins and, uh, yeah. and ogrins and what like that. The ogrin bodyguard included. Look, the large takeaway here is that the unkillable ogrin is no longer a thing, primarily because they got rid of the five up feel no pain. It's now six up. Uh, they've got rid of the minus one damage, and he can no longer take the base two up save, which was how you made him just roll saves and saves and saves. So he's no longer a thing. In fact, they got more. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they got more expensive as well. But going on to Mister Big Boy, here we go. This is something I played a lot of. The Sentinel variants, right? So let's go. Change the Sentinels mainly stayed the same in all their um, in all their weapon profiles, apart from their close combat, which they went from six two two. To six one one, so six minus one damage one. So totally they lost fine. a bit of combat, okay. they were, but they get they it for free now. Too good in combat before. There was no reason for them to have been that good. <laughs> yeah, um, the scout. They also lost two points of movement each. So important to know. The scout sentinel moves are ten now instead of twelve. Uh, now, this guy, the scout sentinel, scout moves nine. So pretty relevant. That's a large scout move for what most of stuff we've seen. Yeah, uh, and then it's got an ability. At, this is where it compares to the land speeder as well. At the start of your shooting phase, select one enemy unit within 18 inches invisible to this unit. So select one enemy, enemy unit within 18 visible to your Sentinel. Until the end of the phase, each time an Astro Militarum model makes an attack that uh, that targets that unit, reroll a hit roll of one, and if that target is an indirect fire ability, it does not suffer the penalty to the hit roll uh, for shooting at that target for not visible. So effectively, you pick a unit within 18 in the start of your shooting phase, and then everything gets to reroll ones against that, which is really good because your army doesn't have a lot of native rerolls, uh, if any at all. I think this is like the only one. Uh, and then you also um, remove the indirect fire penalty. So, so it's plus one to hit and reroll ones in, in effect. And no, it's it, plus. Uh, oh yeah, there's plus one hit. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's really freaking good. Really good. Uh, really good. And these guys are really tanky too because they used to have a four up save. And mm-hmm. now they've got a three up base save. Mm-hmm. So plus one save, T seven, wound seven. Uh, they even got an additional toughness where a lot of stuff in the game they didn't actually go up in toughness. So really good. Um, I love them. I think these are really good. I think you probably want to play the plasma cannon because in I testing so. the blast is so powerful. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. So and you've got the one hunter killer missile to use as well. So you've actually got a little bit of anti tank there regardless. You do. So, you know, you've got a one-shot LAS cannon, and then you've got the plasma there as well. So I think between the underkiller missile, you've got enough anti-tank to hedge, and then you rock the plasma all day. Mm-hmm. We we found I found these guys to be oppressive. To because, so they've got the ten-inch move plus a nine-inch scout plus a possible six advance. So you can go twenty-five inches and get to get within eighteen. So what's eighteen plus twenty-five? Thirty-five, forty-three. You have forty-three inches to to go and look at something. To in order to point out it and be like, yo, you're dead. Um, and then what it does is it activates your um, indirect battery. And then with take aim plus the plus one hit plus the, the uh, reroll ones, you can have a indirect battery that hits on twos rerolling ones. Yep. And it's disgusting. It's really, yep. really rough. Really good. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't blame you for playing nine of these. Uh, there are 50 points a pop, which is what armored Sentinels used to be. Uh, and they've got the same stat line as armored Sentinels because they have plus one save now. So uh, really good. They're an army multiplier. You should play at least minimum three lots of one. Uh, I really liked uh, two units of one, one unit of three. But honestly, with the Ursula Creed ability working that way now, I would definitely play three units of three. Really, really powerful. Yeah, three by three is kind of what I think you should start with and then yeah. take take away as you need. Uh, yeah. I would like to ri- walk over to Rattlings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go. But actually, are quite a good unit. Their toughness two with one wound and a six Oof. up save. Go on, go you little Oof. hobbit bastards. I love <laughs> you. Uh, very good gun now. Uh, same as the the sniper rifle and the scout. So hits on threes at four two two. So strength four minus two two damage, which is heavy and precision. Mm. Um, they do have infiltrators and they have stealth in your shooting phase. After this unit has shot, if it is not within engagement range of any enemy units, it can make a normal move as if it was your movement phase. If it does, until of course the end of the turn, they can't charge. So they go shoot and scoot. 
And I think this is, if you are not taking a lot of scout sandals, this is your front line. This is your, you know, block out the deep strike, block out the uh, rapid insertions, get in the way, do a little bit of value here and there. Um, I'm trying to, I'll quickly get you how many points they are. If I 70 right. points for five. 70 points for five. Not too expensive, not too cheap also for what they do, because you could take a unit of exactors for 35 essentially and have two, you know, and, and do essentially the same thing. Um, I do still really like Rattlings. I think they are a worthy choice if you wanted to go that yeah. way. You could also play um, 45 more points. You could get uh, Gaunt's Ghosts, which are a Correct. squad of five, I think, which infiltrate a uh, lone operative thing as well, kind of block people out as well. So it depends on where your list lands, though, stuff like that, right? You know, sometimes yeah. you've got 120 points, sometimes you've got 70 points, yeah. Mm. That's the way it works out. Um, all right, another one from yourself, mate. We'll... Yeah, Armored Sentinels. Let's go to the big brother. Let's just go straight uh, there. So... Yeah, these guys got a two-up save, toughness mm-hmm. eight. Uh, they're 70 points a model, though, so they went up quite a bit. more, yeah, um, for less so, move you know, and, a, and a less move and a worse activa- like a worse uh, army activator or yeah, exactly. Energy. It depends. It depends on what your meta is looking like, but um, I would play. So their their army, their data sheet abilities. Each time you make an attack and you target a vehicle or monster, you can reroll the wound roll. So what I would take on these guys personally, I would also play the plasma. Yep. because plasma is going to be good against infantry, mm-hmm. and then plasma is also going to be good against tanks because you're going to be re-rolling, looking for fives anyway. So Correct. kind of good either way. Um, if I would never take these guys over as scout sentinels, uh, simply because of the points. Um, yep. And if you look at the efficiency, scout sentinels are very good. These guys, and like it's actually harder for your opponent to kill the armored sentinels, and you kind of want them to die because you want to bring them back. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's kind of that element too, <laughs> but um, yeah. I mean, they're still really solid. If your opponent had them across the board and were playing them correctly, you know, they were pushing them aggressively, holding objectives, blocking objectives. You know, you'd be like, wow, okay, that's quite a good unit. So definitely a strong unit, but um, yeah, for sure, nothing and, to yeah. And the uh, the 18th Sentinel list is still alive and well. Just it's just uh, just under 1100 points here. Six six thirty for the seventy points each, so uh, two two ten for three, so six thirty for nine um, armored, and then four fifty for for nine scouts. So uh, one thousand and eighty points for your eighteen sentinels, and you know what? Probably still a good list. Probably still a good list. Chuck six hundred points of indirect in there. Leontis two squads. You know, yep. maybe th- three units of five exactors or whatever, and uh, you're in. All right, let's do that indirect, and we're going to cover them all Ooh. as one. So we'll cover the bassies and the manta causes as one one thing because sure. they're you essentially interchangeable. The take three of of both. Uh, the yeah. bassie is the one that I have problems with. I don't feel it should not be a premium damage dealing piece and have a, a premium debuff as well. This really bothers me. Um, so you look at uh, you compare this to say a thunderfire cannon and a whirlwind being on the same platform. So the th- the, the whirlwind getting the thunderfire's debuff essentially is what the bassie. Is. It uh, is. T- it's still toughness nine with eleven wounds. It's not easy to remove. Um, its Earth Shaker cannon is blast heavy and indirect with <laughs> a hilarious two hundred and forty inch range. I just love that they're like made the table smaller and then just refused to reduce the range on the Bassy guns. Yeah. Like it's two hundred and forty uh, forever for twenty years. You can, shoot your, you can shoot your opponent's table like you know four tables yeah. over. Right? If you, you just put the blast template on their car in the car park. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's got D3, so D6 plus three shots, so min four. You know, you're shooting at a 20 man, it's five plus D6, so min six. Hits on fours at eight, eight, two, two. So strength eight minus two, two damage. Where it gets crazy is the Earthshaker round. So in your shooting phase, after this model has shot, if one or more of those attacks were made using the Earthshaker cannon, which it's always going to shoot, it's freaking Earthshaker cannon, um, scores a hit against an infantry unit until the end of your opponent's turn, that unit is shaken. While it's shaken, it's a track true from its move, advance, and charge rolls. So not only do you kill stuff with this thing that could be hitting on twos or re-rolling, um, it also debuffs them should they survive. Um, I've found this to be a big problem. Yeah, it's really powerful. And guess what, Adam? Eight, strength 8, 2, 2. Great profile into Desolation Marines. Absolutely. So, and what, um, toughness 9, 11 wounds doesn't die to Desolation Marines. You wound it on doesn't 6. Doesn't die to Desolation Marines. No. Mm-hmm. Yep, Castellan's winning on sixes. So, uh, Bass looks fantastic. Uh, you know, they're uh, oppressively costed. Um, 110 they, points. Uh, Why? They, Why? Uh, yeah. Uh, it, could, it, yep. could be, dude, it could be 210 points. You would take a couple. Like, I don't understand. Yeah, yeah well, then, that's wrong. I yeah. would definitely take, I would definitely still auto take three. I would auto take three at 150 points. So, it's 50, almost 50% under costed. But yep. let's go on to his big brother, who is. Um, even better at killing marines, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the Manticore. And he's even better at killing marines because regardless of what buffs you get off, the Manticore gets four rerolls to hit 
if you have five or more models. Uh, How sick is that? What? Yeah. Why? <laughs> sort of not a great Why? ability. Less um, rerolls though. Less rerolls, guys. <laughs> Chill. He's 120 inch range. Uh, he's got D6 plus one. So the Basilisk has D6 plus three. Manticore's got D6 plus one. Blast heavy indirect. You know, he's got the full suite of uh, keywords mm-hmm. that you want. Um, strength 10, minus two, flat three. So flat three being a little bit better against stuff like Custodes or something like yep. that, maybe. Uh, or, you know, just better at killing a, I don't know, a rhino, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Banticore's really good. Uh, and strangely enough, it's 105 points. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, I think GW is telling you what to uh, play here. Correct. It's definitely not telling you to play the tank commander for 240 points. No. It's telling you to play the manticore for uh, 105 points. And that's what you should do. You should play the manticore. It's, um, because it's it, really good. It really bothers me that I feel like all the Lehman Russes are fairly costed. So the Demolisher is 220 points. It's probably the best one. It's got the shortest range, but it's easily got the best gun. Um, and it's 220 points. That's kind of a fi- what I want like a battle tank to cost. And then the Manticore is literally less than half the points. It yeah. is, it's obnoxious. It's stupid. I really don't like it. I have no idea how they internally costed guard because it is really all over the place. <laughs> it is uh, the definition more, of all over the dude, place. <laughs> more, more than a lot of other factions, guard is showing absolute, um, like almost bipolar in, yeah. uh, in the extremes of how it's yeah. been treated. Um, oh, it's schizophrenic, it, it, yes. Yes, it's really it's a, such a head scratch moment. All right, let's jump to the Rogal Rogal Diggy Dawn. Oh, Rogal Dawn, yeah, um, yeah. So he's pretty much the same man. He's he hasn't changed very much. Which that's I'm right. happy because I have a, I have a beautifully painted Rogal Dawn that's been like twenty hours painting. So um, I like to put him on the table, you know, because of that. But um, he's quite good. Uh, how many points? He's got a little bit cheaper now actually, uh, because um, you can take all the guns for free. So he's two hundred and eighty five points. So he got a little bit cheaper because he used to be three twenty if you took the Knight of Piety upgrade as well. But um, he got a little bit worse because you can't use Leon to put four rerolls hit uh, on him, which is something you commonly do. You sink that one ability into a huge um, data sheet that you have. Uh, so he got um, a Blade of Plating, which is once per battle, uh, so not once per turn. Uh, when a damage is allocated to this model, you can change the damage characteristic of the attack to zero. So I can confirm that the damage, when an attack is allocated, it means that your opponent has successfully wounded. So you do not get to see whether or not you make the save Correct. first. So it's not like, you know, it's it's something. It's, but it's better than no ability, right? But where this um, works is against dev wounds. You get, to, you get to zero. If my read is correct, you mm-hmm. get to zero it before it turns into mortals. Yes, you're 100% so, correct. Previously to the non-commentary version, it didn't yep. used to work. But now thanks to the commentary, 100% works, which is great against D-Cannons and Ranked Knights. Uh, absolutely, baby. It will save you against that friggin' um, the Valiant uh, Harpoon as well. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. If they get that four plus to wound, just be like, never heard of that, son. I will not yeah. be taking 12 mortal wounds today. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, his, uh, his Oppressor Cannon and Pulverizer Cannon are actually pretty good these days, man. Um, 12, negative 2, flat 3 is a pretty good profile at 72 inch range to have. Uh, and then the Pulverizer is 9, 3, 3, and they're both blasts. So, going to get some additional shots here and there. Um, he's good. I couldn't blame you for taking him, but I think the most oppressive list will probably opt to cut him. I agree. I think he's a, he's a good choice. When the indirect gets nerfed, I do expect this to be a good um, option for people to take. Again, right now the indirect is too good. You would you wouldn't touch these guys. Um, I promised all of you, and uh, I, I'm going to follow through. Here's the Hellhound, my favorite tank <laughs> guard, my absolute bay, the Hellhound. I have I have three. Um, they are my fa- they're some of my favorites. How many? You points definitely are they don't here? proxy them as chimeras, right? No, hundred percent. Hundred, hundred. Well, dude, I've got five chimeras. I've never needed. <laughs> to. Uh, uh, hundred and twenty-five points for this guy. Moose ten, toughness ten, two plus save, eleven wounds. Yeah, not two easy. Plus to, nice. Yeah, not easy to kill. They're all the same data sheet now. You just take whichever gun you want. They all have the same special rule. They got deadly demise D six, so they do boom boom nice. Um, <laughs> when you fl- they got flush them out in your shooting phase after this model has shots. So like one enemy unit that was hit by one or more of those attacks until the end of the phase that unit cannot have the benefits of cover so just hit anything mm. with any one of its any one of its uh attacks and they can't have the benefits of cover considering it can have auto hitting guns here there and everywhere um ah. but you can also hit them with the hunter killer missile which is 48 inch range true. so it's true yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that is absolutely right. Um, Probably not how they envisaged flushed them out to work. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, they does have some cute profiles, like the chem cannon is uh, anti-infantry 2+, plus and torrent, only 12-inch range, D6 plus 1, so it wounds anything that's anti-infantry on 2, and otherwise is strength 2, but it's only neg 2 and 2 damage. I was really hoping they'd be like neg 4 
two damage because yeah, yeah. it's, it's the, yeah, really crazy there. Um, the Inferno Cannon is still probably the best one because it's a flamer that's 18 inch range, so it's actually just a legitimately good Overwatch target. Uh, 2d6 auto hits at 6 to 1. Uh, so I, yeah, and of course, nice. it's, it's Tyrant Ignores Cover. Uh, the Melter Cannon is hilarious. D3 shots again with Blast, um, 18 inch range. <laughs> hits on fours, yay, at nine, neg four, D6, but it's Melter four. So when you're within 18, nine inches, sorry, uh, when you're in nine, it's D6 plus four damage. But you will not take that one, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Poor glass for the old Hellhound. It's, uh, it, uh, you know. Man, I wish you could transport, like, five guys in the Hellhound. I yep. think that'd be a really cool way to differentiate Man, it. But, I wish uh, it was cheaper than a Basilisk. <laughs> yes, yes. Why oh, would you ever use God. other Basilisk? Uh, yeah. it's, I guess it's... quickly, uh, quickly yep. I was going to say, we'll cover the um, Heavy Weapons Squad. You probably yes. want to take one of these guys. Yep. Just one unit of three mortars to trigger your uh, stratagem, like we talked about before, that where Fields of Fire, where you can shoot something and you um, and you get a thing for it. Also, you know, you can just chuck them in the back of your board. You might draw an investigate signal. You know, and yep. just investigate signal with them, right? They're pretty Correct. good. Correct. Field ordnance batteries are kind of They're interesting. Kind of interesting. Yeah, I've I've seen these debated as uh, yay or nay. What do you feel? I haven't looked at the list, but I wouldn't. So the the one downside about these things is that they have a huge base. So I own two in real life as well. Uh, they're quite large. Uh, so you know. Maybe something. I mean, you know, you do get uh, sustained hit six, so the data sheet ability is if it remains stationary. It's sustained hit six, uh, sustained hit one. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's quite good. Their their bomb blast field gun is uh, seven one uh, seven minus one damage two. So if you combo that with fields of fire, it's quite good into um, good desolation rings because you're going to be seven two two uh, d six blast uh, and direct. So um, you know they're not bad. Uh, let me look up the points here. Do, 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 do. Field ordnance battery. Where are we? It's hiding from me. The field. Oh, it's, yeah. Okay. So hundred points two, for two. two 50, out of 50, yeah, dude. Fifty points each. I think they're pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. Um, not oh, as bad got... as a man- not as good as a manticore, but yeah, you know, and the, you the can only play three manticores, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you hit the nail on the head though, because the biggest issue is real estate. It's just having enough. Because you are good. Oh man, I I am if. If I was t- taking a guard list to an event I intended to win, it would have three of each Manticores and Basilisks. And then I'm trying to envision yeah. the table where I get to hide those and any any field order and batteries as well. I think even exactly. hiding the six indirect pieces is going to be a struggle on most tables. Yeah, yeah. You kind of just got to hope to weather the storm a little bit on them, I think, um, and have some recourse if they do come out and shoot you directly. Mm. Um, well, we've got so- the Wyvern. Is, uh, I was going to say the Wyvern's kind of interesting. 95 yep. points, pretty cheap. Um, it's got um, the Wyvern Quad Storm Shard Mortar, who for some reason doesn't have 4d6, has 2d6, even though it's a yeah. quad thing. Yep. So, I guess twin linked, I suppose. But it's um, 5, 0, 1. So strength 5, AP 0, damage 1. But it, this thing has the most keywords I've ever seen of a weapon. Mm-hmm. It has blast, ignores cover, heavy, indirect fire, twin linked. Uh, five keywords. So um, it's pretty yeah, cute. 95 points. It's not bad, and it suppresses stuff. So, you know, like um, like we said with the strat, uh, you can actually put, you know, something that you shoot, minus one to hit. Um, yeah. Not bad. Yeah. 95 points for an 11-wound D9 3-up save tank. That's pretty cheap. Do we want to meme out on the Aegis defense line for a moment? Oof. Uh, <laughs> that thing went up 200% in points, by the way. Just going to put did. it out there. And it's From 40 mess. points to 100. It's a mess. You can go. Go for it. So, Only you have it. Go for it. Everybody, please be reasonable. No, your Aegis defense line cannot declare a charge. Just don't oh. do it. I mean, <laughs> technically you can. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, it's not eligible to pilot an Orcus Island, I don't believe. What about heroically intervening? Heroically intervening can overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny as hell. Uh, it's toughness twelve with a two plus save and ten wounds. And see, this is so the picture is of the very specific Aegis defense line emplacement, not the very old one that I have from like fifth edition that has all the yes. little segments. It's the yep. very specific emplacement one that they released, um, I think, last year. Um, if, and the, the abilities, there is a lot of abilities. Um, in place platform, friendly astronaut time infantry models can be set up um, or end any type of move. Um, on top of the platform section of this fortification, the reinforced cover, uh, every time a range attack is allocated to a model, if the model is not fully visible um, to every model in the attacking unit because of fortification, you have the benefits of cover. And the defense line, 
whilst infantry models have the benefits of cover, they also have a four pass invulnerable save, which is pretty Sweet. cute. And then the fortification, the wild enemy unit is only within engagement range of um, one or more fortification from your army. That unit can still be selected to target it to shoot. You can still shoot them and charge them and do all that stuff. <laughs> um, needs a lot of G Dub. Their their fortification rules need a little bit of work. Is where I'm yeah. going to leave with that because this thing brings more problems to the table than it than it, <laughs> than it, it, it solves. We and... own it. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you play that successfully, leave a comment down below. Uh, yes, correct. Uh, you know, I don't think that one's going to impact the algorithm a lot. Mm. Um, <laughs> so yeah, mate. I think there was there was just two things I wanted to cover. Yep. One was the Chimera. Chimera yep. got firing deck two, so transport it's 85 great. points, still very reasonable. What you can do is take a heavy weapon squad with one mortar, and then you can take two las cannons in it. So you can actually stick that inside the Chimera and fire two las cannons from it. So not terrible. And then I just wanted to quickly cover the Scions. So you can take Scions, the Torox, and the Torox Prime. In my experience, you're paying a lot for a unit that doesn't do anywhere near as much damage as it used to do. So Correct. I did play 30 Scions in both most both my lists at the Birmingham and Warhammer Fest. What was the strongest part about them is you can come down, get full, you can get real ones to hit and wound because of Lord Soul Leontis. You can't do any of that now, and all their, their weapons are the same strength or lost in AP as well, so they don't hit anywhere near as hard. They're the same points. Honestly, I would cut my losses and instead of looking at them. They are good now for secondary play because they just deep strike naturally for 55 points but you're going to want to look more towards the tanks and indirect uh as your main batteries of damage and then just having stuff like that to play the secondary. So i like all. i like two by five scions take whichever guns it, they're probably not going to matter take whichever guns you want and you literally you're going to use them as secondary getters they're going to be utility pieces it's it's uh, i think you said 55 i do think it's i think it's 60 points now yeah oh, 60, 60 sorry 60, yeah oh, they're, they're 12, 12, 12 12 points a pop oh the um, same sorry uh, and yeah, just to, just take them. They're just utility pieces now. They're not going to do any heavy lifting for you, unfortunately. I was really looking forward to like possibly doing a two thousand point Scion army again, um, <laughs> but no, nah, unfortunately, not this edition. Is there a Bane Blade that tickles your pickle? Is there a Bane Blade uh, the only one that I like is the one that has firing deck one billion? Um, is that the Stormlord and... firing deck twenty four? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the the Stormlord, and that's primarily because you can put as many heavy weapon teams as you want in it. Correct. And actually, heavy weapon teams, you know, because it's a las cannon, right? Like. You can get a lot of guns in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you could put, you know, Tim Gaskin in there. You could put, I mean, you could literally put like, you know, three by three heavy weapon teams in this thing. <laughs> uh, it can transport 40 people. That's a lot. The only, so I, I actually, I'm not going to lie. You could probably four one an event with a Stormlord if your terrain enabled you to play it. I genuinely mean that because T13, two up save, 24 wounds. You can make, you know, subtract the damage with Ursula Cree. Give a four up and vulnerable, heal D3 wounds. It's actually not that bad, but the problem is that the terrain rules often make it so these models are kind of unplayable in my experience. Mm. Yeah, the terrain is going to be the biggest thing naturally that holds back the Bane Blade. It's got one of the biggest plat biggest footprints of any model in the it's game. It's huge. It's so unwieldy. They don't move that fast. They only move nine. It's actually really bad yeah. that they only move nine. I wish they moved 12. Yeah. I wish they moved 14, 18. I don't care. Just more than that. Um, their toughness freaking 13 with a 2 plus save and 24 <laughs> wounds. They are phenomenally hard to kill. Uh and wound and all these things. I actually, uh, so the Stormlord has the biggest capacity, but I think the gun is crap. I actually prefer yeah. the Doomhammer or where's the other one? It's a Doomhammer. Which or one's the Doomhammer on? Banehammer. So the Banehammer <laughs> and the Doomhammer both have firing deck 12. <laughs> Um, okay, that's nice. Damn. Yeah, okay, they, that's a good their, trans, their transport capacity twenty six. I think the other one was thirty or forty or whatever. Um, but the Bainham is the one I like. So this is the Tremor Cannon. This has got range thirty six, D two D six plus three shots at twelve two three. In your shooting phase, yep, just okay. after selecting a target of this model's Tremor Cannon, the target unit, every other infantry unit within <laughs> three of it must take a battle shock test. It's kind of it's kind of cute. It's kind of cute. The um the Doom that's, Hammer. Uh... Is, yeah, is anti tank one? It's uh, it's twenty four inch range, but it's a melt to six, so at twelve <laughs> inches. It's plus six d three plus three shots at twelve ne uh, neg four d six, and each time it uh, it models a mechanic and targets a monster or vehicle. Um, it's always considered to be in half range. So even at twenty four inches, you're getting the plus six damage. So it's twelve you know minus what? four d six plus six. I'm gonna call it here. I think you are right, and that the uh, the bane hammer. The Bane Hammer, what a sick name too, uh, is. is the better one. You know what I would have loved to, for them to attach to this rule? I th these should be towering. 
They should. Holy <laughs> um, shit, they should. Oh, my God. Um, no, okay. But in all seriousness, what they should be able to do is move over terrain features that are four or less inches high. They should. Um, they should that right, may right, sound right. strange. Well, they nonsense. should have some rules where, like, you know, you move over terrain piece, it destroys it, you know? Because yep. it's a fucking giant tank. I do. Um, I yeah. do think that slapping four twin heavy flamers on one of these things, driving yep. it into the middle of the table with Ursula somehow within twelve inches and an engine seer giving it a four plus, and then just daring your opponent to come out and get overwatched is kind of cute. Is it's legit, bad, yeah. legitimately kind of cute. Whether it's good or not that. is is up for debate. I think the firing deck is the real key there. That's yeah, the one is. you have to optimize because you yeah. can get really cheap las cannons. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, it's good. Well, <laughs> one of my first builds, and this is in Index 8th edition before the Rule of Three, was to yeah. literally min-max mortars into my Stormlord. So <laughs> you'd have to kill a Stormlord to stop my... I, I had nine heavy weapons. No, no, not nine. <laughs> heavy weapons teams. Yeah, 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 I had nine heavy weapons teams. So I had 27 mortars. And so you were literally playing the list I just talked about. Yes, the, uh... yeah, yeah, except there was no Rule of Three, so you could have as many mortars as you could fit in the thing. And I, I, I did that. <laughs> Fantastic. There you uh, go. That's anyway. pretty much it, guys. The uh, you know the big boys you're not going to play. You do want to lean into the indirect uh, quite a lot. That's clearly where the point most point efficient things are. You know, start it's, your list uh, with three Mantis, three Bassies, nine Scout Sentinels, Ursacree, Leontis, and then if you've got 800 points after that, you know, um, take whatever you want. You know, you probably want to spend 250 points on scoring, maybe mm-hmm. a loan op, um, maybe a, you know Chimera can't go wrong. No. And um, yeah, I, I am. So I am really disappointed about the internal balance here because there yeah. isn't another option. The, no. the indirect battery is priced so ridiculously aggressively. Mm-hmm. Nothing else really compares for the value that you will get. And it's, it's pretty disgusting how efficient you can make it. They just, yes. they might, if they're hitting on twos rerolling. They might as well auto hit. They're all strength eight or better. So against any infantry, they might as well auto wound. It's mm-hmm. stupid. It's very stupid. Yeah, it doesn't make for the most interactive gameplay, which is a shame because I think, uh, you know, Guard used to be a very, very technically skilled uh, codex. Yeah. And they've actually dumbed down a lot of the rules order, uh, or orders uh, you could do. So a lot of these units, guys, that used to be able to get an order after you would disembark mm. a unit from a transport, for example, uh, you can no longer do that. So yeah. that actually that reduces the output of a lot of these units that you think would be very good. Oh. And because there's no rerolls, you can't deep strike and get rerolls too. It, it reduces the variety of units that you will see as well dramatically. Like you just you're just not going to play that mechanized list, which is the the my it's my favorite way to play. It's mechanized infantry, and yeah. it's just it's just not a thing right now. Hopefully the codex yeah. gives it a lease on life. Um, but as it sits right now, mate, how would you rank guard in the competitive Oof. lexicon? How high did you put them up? Do you put them up the rankings? Man, it's so it's, everything is so up in the air these days. Mm. Uh, you know, for me personally, I think Aldari is on the level of just don't bother coming to the table. Yeah, uh, Marines <laughs> is on the um, extremely good needs a nerf um, overpowered rating, and then under that, I think you've got a lot of that's where it starts to open up a lot. You've got uh, Thousand Suns. No, I'm not going to no, in no particular order here. You know, I'm thinking um, some kind of Knight variant with Demons, uh, Thousand Suns, GSC. Uh, you know, just maybe custodies at some point, you know, Imperial Knights. Yeah, I think Guard are in that mix there. Me too. Um, I don't think that they're a top four faction. My top four would probably be something like um, Aldari, Marines, GSC, and then, you know, the top, you know, T-Suns there maybe. Yeah. Uh, Yet to find out. Um, So, yeah, that's kind of where I'd place them. Um, They're in the mix, but... Unfortunately, they're quite linear and one-dimensional now. I, I agree. I think when they're good, they are... So their best build is as good as, I think, the Marine Indirect build. But the Marine, the Marine Indirect build has flexibility, has nuance, has a far more unit options that are at that level. As soon as... If, like, if, if they were to just, like... Uh, like nerf the guard indirect i think the army drops off uh phenomenal oh, drop off after cliff, that yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 i mean it, look at a unit like rough riders for example yeah. how would you ever play that unit in yeah. uh today's edition with, with five decimals, just just killing 10 of them immediately like it's yeah it's not even a thing but yeah so that's that's my issue the indirect the the, the internal balance just isn't there like there is the ridiculously optimum premium build and then a massive cl- cliff towards b- before the next best units even surface. And um, what I don't what I don't really understand is why they made things like ogrins and stuff like that. They just priced them through the roof as well. They, and they got worse well, and more expensive. And it's like, I mean, we, we get that guard shouldn't, you know, should maybe pay more for melee or something, but these units haven't been good for the previous Codex edition as well. Uh, and they're still terrible. You know, Sergeant Harker is, you know, 
he's, he's not great. Um, you know, these other melee orientated units are very difficult to make work. Um, Katachan jungle fighters are awful. I don't know what, I don't know how they differentiate. It's because they can take a flame of it. I guess they're a different model. Um, so <laughs> yeah. yes. Yeah. I mean, it's death, tough, man. death core look great. Uh, Cadians look yes. fine, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Kat- Katachans are easily the redheaded stepchild there. They just don't, they just don't <laughs> touch the sides. There's, and that's really unfortunate because, man, I know so many like Katachan diehards that just love that aesthetic, love that. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, to put it in perspective, like I, I believe I'm the world rank one guard player at the moment. I probably should be, um, but um, you know, I was playing like I was playing like uh, no, I was. Just, I haven't looked at the updates. I'm going to say that from now on too. I'm just be like, I think I think I'm um, the the best player in the world, and if I'm not, I should be. <laughs> um, but you know, I was playing armored superiority, swift as the wind, like yeah. two melee. I had the two melee relics, the tower yeah. sword and the chain sword uh, relic. So I had the cute. warlord trade for upgraded, you know, sixes explode plus one to wound. You know, I was own like genuinely. I could probably spend another like couple of weeks, two three tournaments, looking through the old guard codex because mm. it was so deep and intricate. Deep. Yeah, uh, and it wasn't in balance too. It was like a top five faction at that time. And well, as soon as, so as, soon much, as they. But, as soon as they nerfed the Cassican, it all got pretty. It was all kind of pretty reasonable yeah, after that. It exactly was, right. yeah. I, I still wish their sixes to hit didn't count as sixes to wound, um, because <laughs> that was just never good in any form ever. And yeah, yes. we're doing it. We're probably doing it again in in this edition. Joy. <laughs> yeah. uh, but on that note, Matt, we are going to wrap up. Thank you very much for coming on again, Matt, and giving us your time and uh, no your knowledge. Really appreciate it, dude. Anything you'd like to say or plug on the way out? No, no, uh, thanks for having me on again. It's always good to talk. Um, yeah, David from 40K Fireside Podcast. And uh, wherever you are, God is, um, you know, it's not dead. So um, carry on and have fun with it. Whatever way you like to enjoy the game, you want to play three Rogal Dawns, go play three Rogal Dawns. Absolutely. Um, it'll be still be really fun. It will be. And uh, on that note, good night, mate. Please go over and join us over on part two. Uh, we will be recording a bunch of our impressions of our games with guard, against guard, our lists, etc., etc. Hope to see you there. Take care, good night, and enjoy your 40K. <laughs> see you later. Thank you for listening to Art of War Down Under, a content review podcast for Warhammer 40K. Hosted by Adam Camilleri. Produced by Seamus Ronan. Enjoyed the show? Want your lists reviewed and the content you heard put into practice? Sign up to our Patreon and connect with us online or on Facebook. Just search for Art of War Down Under. Signing out from tomorrow.